Hi, this is Kay of Clever Someday, and this video is for folks who want to draw sketches with a Cricut Explorer or Cricut Maker. You should have already watched the video on how to use the SketchMe app and the video on how to convert the SketchMe generated PDF with Inkscape into a ready to draw file. Or perhaps you downloaded one of my free files and just want to draw it. Either way, I'll show you how to bring the SVG into Design Space, how to select pens, and finally how to perform the sketch with your Cricut. So we're going to come to Cricut Design Space and open a fresh new document. We're going to click on Upload, Upload Image, and then we're going to find our SVG that we made. I saved it in my Documents folder. Here you'd want to name and tag the image. I'm going to skip that for the sake of time, but obviously you want to have good habits in this area so that you can find things later on. I'm going to click Save, and here's my uploaded document. I'm going to click it, and then click Insert Image to bring it to my mat. And I'm just going to move it up to where I can see it. One thing you'll notice is that all the strokes look the same now. You can't see three different widths of stroke anymore, which is what I warned you about. You can also see that we have three layers here. This is what we want and why we combine the paths in Inkscape first. Otherwise, we would have had hundreds of layers. Now for convenience, I'm going to draw a rectangle the size of my frame, or the overall size I want this to be. So let's say we want to do this for an 8 by 10. So the width would be 10, and the height would be 8. And then I'm going to change this rectangle to score. So we're going to want our boots to fit in that, and we're going to keep that locked. And I'm going to try an 8 inch width and I'm going to select both of these and center them. Align center and then I can move this up where I can see it. And that looks pretty good. You could of course size this or position it however you want. I'm going to select all and attach. So I'm going to select the top layer of my boots and I'm going to change it to right. And you'll see we have a choice of Cricut pens in the list, but we haven't decided which pens to use yet, and we may not even be using Cricut pens. So this is where it can get confusing. Whatever choice I make here is what will show up in the prompt when it tells me to load a pen. And since we don't know what order it's going to write the layers in, we have to rely on the prompts to know which pen to install. So I'm just going to start at the top of the list and arbitrarily designate 0.3 as my light pen, 0.4 as my medium pen, and 0.8 as my dark pen. So I selected the top layer, but which layer is that? You remember I asked you to make a mental note of what each layer looked like, and you can go by the tiny thumbnail, but we can use the same trick we used in Inkscape and temporarily set this to red to see what this layer looks like. And you'll recall that our darkest layer had a lot of detail around the bottom of the boot, around the toe. So I know that this is my dark layer. So I'm going to set my dark layer to 0.8 because it's the third one on the list. I also remember that the layer with the most on it was the light layer. I'm going to set it to 0.3. That leaves the middle layer, set it to right, and we're going to use 0.4. So again, arbitrarily, light, medium, and dark. Next we'll take a look at our pens and decide what actual pens these layers will be getting. We can do all the slick software conversions we want, but ultimately this process rests on the tip of your pens. We need three different shades of black because that's what we told SketchMe we wanted when we set layers to three. It generated the image based on that, and so three shades are what is needed to render it properly. It turns out it's not that easy to find pens that come in a range of widths and work properly in the Cricut. The ideal tip for this type of precision drawing is a needle tip, which has a metal sleeve and a plastic nib like the Cricut 0.4 pen. Metal tip gel pens also work nicely. Bullet style tips, like a standard Sharpie or the Cricut medium pen, tend to widen out pretty drastically once you use them in a machine. Currently Cricut is only shipping the 0.4 width in needle tips. I have an older Cricut pen marked 0.03, but it seems to have been discontinued. I initially thought that the precision pens from American Crafts would be perfect, but I discovered that they are actually slightly longer than Cricut pens and tend to back out on long drawing projects like this. If you were purchasing pens specifically for this process, my recommendation would be the Pitt Artist Pens. 
They fit in the Cricut Explorer accessory side and have a reputation for durability. The choices are a little confusing, so I'll put an affiliate link in the description of the video for the set I recommend. Of course, you may already have pins you can use, especially if you are a pin and adapter collector like I am. Narrow your pin choices down by hand and then run some tests with the Cricut because the straight angle and the machine's pressure can give different results than you get by hand. So when you test, make sure you use the paper and settings you plan to use for your project. In general, you want to use the lowest pressure that will work to preserve the life of your pins. Be sure to stop by my blog for the latest information on pins and holders because I'm still experimenting with options. For the boot project in the video, I've selected the discontinued Cricut .03 pin for light, Cricut .4 for medium, and a Recollections open stock medium tip marked 08 for my dark. Remember that when we prepared the file, we arbitrarily chose the top three pin choices in Design Space as our light, medium, and dark, respectively. The prompt on the screen won't typically be asking for the pins we have actually chosen to use and will need to translate. I made myself a little card with pockets to help me keep things straight. You could use a chart or post-its, rubber bands, or your memory, but you don't want to get confused and load the wrong pin because these take a long time to draw and you don't want to have to start over. As for setting up the machine, you have a choice to slide your star wheels over to the right side or the left side if you are worried about ink smearing. You might want to do this with thicker media or slow drying pens, but they help keep the paper flat on the mat, so it's a trade-off. Of course, if you're hoping to create a long-lasting work of art, be sure your pens are permanent and your paper is archival as well. This process lays down a lot of ink, so don't use something too thin or porous because it might warp, buckle, or tear. I'm using American Crafts cardstock that has a little bit of texture to it. Pens don't put a side force on the paper like a blade does, so you don't need a very sticky mat. In fact, you don't want a mat that's too sticky or it will be more difficult to remove your drawing without curling it. If you have trouble with the edges lifting, you can tape them to the mat. So now it's time to click the Make It button. You'll see on the upper left it says Score and Draw. That's what it's supposed to say, but we're actually not going to be scoring. Click Continue. Select our Cricut device. I'm going to be using an Explore Air 2. I'm going to set my pressure to Vinyl because that's the lowest pressure I can use and access the Fast Mode on my Explore Air 2. Now, it's telling me to load the scoring stylus in Clamp A, but we're not actually going to score, so I'm actually going to not put anything in Clamp A. And I also took the blade out of the B side. I just like to do that as an extra precaution, not really necessary. Now the load light, the arrow light is blinking, so I'm going to load my mat by clicking that blinking arrow. And now if you have the Explore Air 2 or Maker and are on the right settings, you can have an option to click Fast Mode, which I'm going to do for video purposes at least. I probably would use this anyway. Now I get the prompt to press the flashing Go button. Now what's going to happen here is it's going to act as though it's scoring and go around that rectangle. What this allows us to do is watch and make sure that we have loaded our paper correctly and that it's going to draw where we want it to. So that rectangle represents the boundary of the drawing. So this is just an air score that gives us a chance to verify we have what we want. Okay, now you'll see the prompt is asking me to load the black 0.8 tip glitter in clamp A. If you remember before, we designated 0.8 means dark. So what it's asking is to load my dark pen in clamp A. So I'm going to use my dark designated pen, which is 08, and I'm going to load it. Verify, I've got my dark pen loaded, ready to go. I'm going to click the flashing Cricut head button. And it's going to begin to draw the dark layer of my sketch. Okay, so that layer is finished. I'm going to slide my index card under, remove the pen. You see the screen is asking me for the 0.4 tip, which means medium. So I'm going to choose my medium pen and install that and remove my index card and click on the flashing Cricut head to start the drawing of the medium layer.
Okay, so that layer is finished. I'm going to slide in my index card, take out my medium pen. Only got one left. It's the light pen. Put it in. My index card. Click the flash and click the button again. This last layer has the most to draw, so it's going to take a while. It's a good time to go do laundry or something. Okay, so we're all done, so we can press the unload button and click dismiss and click finish. All that's left to do now is carefully remove the paper from the mat. I recommend putting it face down on a clean surface and rolling the mat up from the paper to limit curling. Your finished sketch is ready for framing or can be trimmed for a card front or whatever else you want to do with it. This is one of those techniques that is much easier to do than to explain. So I hope the fact that this has taken three videos hasn't scared you off. Once you have this process in your arsenal, I know you'll be finding many new ways to take advantage of it. Be sure to stop by my blog at cleversomeday.com where I'll be sharing free sketch files for you to try, as well as the latest info on pens and holders. As always, I don't ask for anything except a like and a share if you appreciate my tutorials. I love getting your comments and questions either at my Clever Someday YouTube channel or the blog and I'm going to like nothing better than seeing examples of sketches you've created. Thanks for watching, and happy sketching.